This episode is brought to you by Teeth Powder 2.0. Have you been searching for fluoride-free toothpaste alternative? Are you looking to improve your overall oral health? Then Teeth Powder 2.0 is for you. Teeth Powder 2.0 strengthens enamel, eliminates plaque, and improves your overall oral hygiene. Log on to teethpowder.com, clicking the products tab, then using promo code TT with BB to save 15% on orders of two or more. Free shipping for all U.S. orders. Again, that is T E E F P O W D E R dot com with promo code TT with BB. This episode of Trending Topics with BB is brought to you by Ringer. Are you thinking about starting your own podcast but need a way to interview guests long distance? Or do you have a need for a conference calling app but with without the risk of software issues. Then Ringer is the app for you. After some careful research of all the apps out there on the market, Ringer became the clear favorite. Ringer can be used on your PC or Mac or smartphone through a convenient app. They have two inexpensive plans for you to choose from based on your needs and features to create studio quality audio. My listeners can save up to 25% on a plan using ringer.com slash tt with bb so what are you waiting for have the broadcast of your life with ringer and that's again for all my listeners spelled r-i-n-g-r dot com slash tt with bb hello and welcome to another rousing edition of trending topics with bb i am your humble host brooke brown hence the bb well we are back for another rousing edition uh this as you see in the description, is another one of my soapbox, and I'll get on that as soon as possible, but I like to get the housekeeping out of the way. If you have not logged on to the official website, which is trendingtopicswithbbpodcast.com, why haven't you? There's so much information. Uh, There's links to all of the social media, to every platform where you can find this podcast, and there's also a link on there to where you can support this podcast by ordering your very own merch. You can get a t-shirt with the logo, you can get a laptop case, a baby onesie, and that's courtesy of our partnership with T Public. So if you would like to support this podcast in any way, uh, please log on to trainingtopicswithbbpodcast.com or our social media pages for those links and deets. And I uh, just want to give a shout out to you, the listeners of this podcast. I appreciate it. Um, I enjoy all of the new uh, listeners. And if you are a new listener or just a returning listener and you haven't left a favorable rating on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, please do so. It helps this podcast be found and it just keeps uh, me going and I know you're listening. And if you have a question, comment, or concern to contact the podcast, go to ttwithbbpod at gmail.com. But again, all of that information is on trainingtopicswithbbpodcast.com. All right, housekeeping out of the way. I need to get on my soapbox. This one's been brewing for quite some time. This one's deep. Uh, but we live in a time, and I mean modern day, maybe since the inception of the internet, but more importantly, social media that we find ourselves aligning with the modern day cult. Now, I'm not talking any religion because anybody that actually knows me, I'm actually more spiritual than I'm religious. I but when you say the word cult, you think of any th- maybe religious cult Uh, There's a bunch of documentaries. If you have not watched the Netflix series, they are not a sponsor. But if you have not watched the Netflix series, Wild Wild Country, that tells you about what a cult is. Um, And overall, before... uh, Well, there was issues with the cult. Uh, When you watch the documentary at the beginning, you're like, Ooh, it'd be fun to join. But then things go south. So uh, there's a lot of documentaries out there about cult. But the reason I'm bringing this up is about 2008, I was in college and I was struggling. I was in a really bad headspace, didn't know I had issues with mental health, which I've talked about on this podcast in previous episodes. Uh, I was lost in terms of my extracurricular activities. I was uh, in marching band and steel drum band. uh, But I ran into some really bad people in that uh, community. 
And then I was also, you know, growing up and enjoying college life and struggling with, you know, it all. And a group that I loved as a kid because I had a babysitter that introduced me to their music back in the day, Reunited. And I'm talking about New Kids on the Block, yes, the boy band. And they came out with a new album and a reunion tour, and it just hit at the right time. And I latched on to that album nonstop, and I bought tickets to their concert, to the nearest concert. And then social media started around 2008, like Facebook and Twitter, um, around that time, before it, like, where it was introduced to the masses worldwide appeal because originally Facebook was a college social media thing because I was never on MySpace in high school or anything. So I latched on to this group and I, and, uh, I've seen it, it. It could be, I've seen people in the same kind of realm and following other bands over the years, uh, music, uh, pop culture, whatever it is. Um, and at the time, because of what I was dealing with in my personal life, I thought this was a great outlet for all the shit I was dealing with. But lo and behold, after a few years into it, of going to concerts, networking with other fans, for which I thought was a good idea, uh, it after about seven years straight, we're just going to skip it, but in that seven years of me heavily devoting my time and money, for which I really didn't have much that I should have been spending, I should have been spending on my livelihood, uh, I realized that, no, I am part of a cult. Because it was a cult following for this artist. The artist quickly themselves figured out that the loyalty of the fans, because the fan there had been a 15 year gap between the last time they were touring and when they started touring in 2008, or came back 2008, 2000, maybe 2007, well, around that time, they basically uh, started to realize that the loyalty and everybody w w was stemmed from everybody dealing with so much bullshit in their lives and needing an outlet, and that they latched on that quick for monetary and um, basically just manipulation for what a cult is. And when you're in deep like that and you're enjoying yourselves, but then despite all other drama, like, for instance, people stole money from me that were also within the fan group, people um, were stealing from others, uh, there was competition to try to get the affection of the band members, all of that bullshit that you, what people used to call back in the day as groupies, were now all fans, but I, I, I equate it to being in a cult, so that's why we're talking about it today. Uh, anyway, after years, we're going to skip forward, after years of experiencing that whirlwind, I got to the point where even going to the concerts what, it became boring because it was the same set list, the same vibes, the same this, same that. Um, same people would go to the same shows. Uh, you know, it, re it got to the point where the butterflies that I had in the reunion tour to seven years later disappeared. The, it wasn't any excitement. And then, I, long story short, uh, in that time actually, I had grown close to one of the members in terms of a friendship, uh, which ended in a disrespectful conversation. For that, I was like, I need to get out of this fucking shit. So, that short story aside, it was probably the best thing for me to take a break from that. I mean, if you know me, and I apologize if you're humming in the background, that is my air conditioning. I meant to mention that earlier. Uh, I'm extremely passionate about music, basically in all genres. Uh, specifically in electronic music, as we have talked about on this podcast a lot, specifically in trance music. Um, even we've talked, we've delved in and have a little conversation about house, techno, whatever, which is part of electronic dance music. I found that stepping away and realizing that I was in the cult and not denying such revelations was the best thing that could have happened. It made me realize I needed to get a life. I needed to uh, move 
on. But here's my problem, is that my mental health um, problem is that I have OCD. So I'm obsessively, I'm obsessive, but I get obsessed about things, excuse me, and compulsive about things, which describes like my behavior and the issues I had while I was following the band. But then it's now translation, you know, you jump ship to whatever thing that gives you an outlet and an escape from everyday reality of this thing we call life. Now, the reason I'm going deep on this soapbox is that I want to warn people out there that are wondering why they're struggling to balance their hobby with their family, friends, and personal lives in a healthy way to take a step back and decide whether or not that the actual hobby you've gotten to the point where that's going to rule your life. Um, it, and in fact, it made my mental health worse. And because I am a person that likes to end the stigma with mental health issues, and which I've mentioned on this podcast in previous episodes a lot, that's why I want to bring this up. Because denying that things have gotten out of hand or that you're just not enjoying yourself, but the routine of it all... What really is making you happy? What is really making you inspired to go forward and live your life if everything surrounding what you think is correct is not? And I had to learn that the hard way. But by stepping away from a former hobby, finding other hobbies, uh, living my life, uh, pursuing career opportunities, whatever it may be, I was able to finally be liberated in a way and, and in a perspective that I think all people right now need to take a look at because, I mean, if you love sports, which I'm a person that used to love sports a hell of a lot more than I do now, but I don't because, well, not that I... It's just thing my love of it for it and the and certain things, I mean, it's still there. And if... Oh, and speaking of, I do have launched a second podcast called Sports Chat Podcast, uh, so check that out. Um, and I, I have a co-host on that one. But as you will have known, if you are a listener of this podcast or a new listeners, check back uh, to past episodes. You will know that I'm very passionate about music, which I've mentioned over and over again. Um, that having a perspective that maybe it's not s- said hobby that's making you happier or escape or whatever it is or maybe it is but the point I'm trying to make is is the blind loyalty and hardcore following the cult following has become more of a hindrance than it is an actual love I guess Uh, I see it in a lot of groups um, primarily because I'm so involved in music, I see it a lot across the music. But I think we need to take a good look. Obviously, the world right now is just, we all think we're like in this big turmoil and everybody's doing what they can to survive. Um, and everybody has their own fucking issues. But I'm trying to explain to you that anybody listening that has a hobby and you're really hardcore about the hobby, great. But what in that loyalty of the hobby makes you happy? Is it the community you're in? Is it the actual hobby itself? Make sure that you're not doing your passion isn't blindsided or steered in the wrong way because of outside factors that may contribute. Which usually is in the manipulation of what cult leaders do. Um, in history, like I mentioned when I started talking about this, is that, you know, we equate cults to religion because for years cults were like, you know, they had a leader. The leader was like, do this and this and this, your life will be better or whatever if you don't. Um, you believed it. And they're very good at manipulating your emotions and obviously uh, your mental health to believing that that sticking to 
or leaving said cult was actually going to be worse than remaining. And I feel like now everybody's taking advantage of the same type of behavior with all kinds of hobbies and fandoms. And, and what's worse is that, you know, you join these groups for the community, for whatever. Say you meet people like I did. But everybody inherently is out for themselves. Um, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good, got a good-willed people in this world. But we're all in this world to survive. And even if we care about other people, inherently, usually you join some sort of hobby that you become very passionate about to make yourself healthy. Um, and it's just, I just want, my soapbox today is to get people to take a look at what they're doing and if it's helping or hurting you in some sort of way. Now, I'm not telling you to quit by any means like I did or move on, but it kind of stems and it kind of coincides with people and their addictions. Like, when you become so wrapped around whatever it may be, uh, you tend to be blinded because you just don't want to let go the memories, the joy, the, the good dopamine release that you have gotten in the past. Uh, but sometimes taking a good hard look and, 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 and breaking through the denial really needs to be looked upon for human growth. And um, on that note, Soapbox out. <laughs>